What's up, YouTube? Mini Mincino here, and welcome back to another mini cast. For those who are new, this is the weekly podcast blog type show where I sort of share with you some updates as well as pick a topic for the week and just sort of talk about something for a while. Um, <laughs> but yeah, guys, as you can hear, I, I still have a cold. If, if, you know, for those who know me in real life, uh, y'all know that I kind of get sick for, like, eons. So this is going to be a thing for a while. Um, like, it is just a cold, but it's kind of persisting and being really annoying. So I apologize for that. I'm going to try to keep sniffling and other such shenanigans to a minimum. But if it happens, I'll do my best to edit it out. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't have too many updates for you guys this week. I'm sorry I haven't had as many videos up. I did put An Unknown Empire out yesterday. I'm gonna put the other half of that up on Monday. I am gonna try to get Pokemon Let's Go back up and rolling. Um, you're still gonna hear this slightly nasally voice though, but I, uh, I hope y'all understand. Um, but yeah, you guys, I don't really have any updates other than that, so, um, you know, I guess we're just gonna dive into this week's topic, and to be honest, I had a bit of a hard time deciding whether or not I wanted to cover this today, but I feel like I might as well. Um, so yeah, today we're talking about removing toxic people from your life, whether it be friends or family members. In my case, it's been, you know, friends for the most part, um, unfortunately. Um, so, I mean, I guess the best way to talk about this is to kind of try to dive into my situation without you know, outing specific individuals. So, um, the people that I am talking about, y'all might know who you are. And, um, you know, despite the things that have happened, I do apologize. I'm not trying to invade your privacy or anything like that. Um, so, you know, please understand. I'm just trying to, um, speak my mind about it and, um, just kind of give my perspective on it. But, um, yeah, I'm going to start with a friend of mine that I've known for years. Actually, both these people I'm talking about today I've known for years. Um, but one friend um, I would visit a lot back in, in high school. And um, I would go to her place frequently, like every other, like twice a month, pretty much. I would go to her place for the weekend and just chill. Um, actually, no, it was like once a month because I'd go to somebody else's <laughs> the other week. Um, but either way, um, it got to the point where, you know, we were pretty tight. You know, we would talk on the phone a lot and stuff like that. And when I went to college, I couldn't go visit her anymore because she was a little bit far away. And at that point, she had moved further away. <laughs> so it became a little bit more tricky. Um, there were points where, um... She would call me like literally 20 times a day, even knowing when I was in class and stuff like that and start demanding, you know, my time when I, you know, when she knew I couldn't give it to her, you know, um, and it got to points where I just wouldn't be able to talk to her for a while. And, you know, eventually when we would talk again, I would, you know, make my stance clear, like, don't do that. I don't have my life to give to you. I have things that I need to do and I need to be able to do them. I understand you want to talk to me, but I can't talk to you every single second of the day. It's physically impossible. Um, and that kind of continued with a back and forth for probably about six years until um, I had to move back to my mom's after... Um, you know, my previous relationship before Candido uh, ended in, uh, eh, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, w it did not end well um, <laughs> for multiple reasons. But um, it got to the point where I was sitting, um, you know, trying to do my best to take care of my family because my uh, parents were not in the best of places. And, um, you know, I was trying to do my best to, to help them out because my mom was still um, dealing with her injuries and permanent effects from the car accident she was in and, and stuff like that. And that made it harder for her to pretty much do anything in terms of uh, 
physical work so I'd be doing a lot of I'd be trying to help with some of the housework and stuff like that and just trying to give them moral support and things of that nature and this friend of mine was going through her own struggles with her family as well um and I was perfectly willing to hear her out and, and try to give her advice and stuff to to kind of help her out but I suggested to her I said listen I'm dealing with a lot as of right now um and I would I told her everything that was going on I didn't hide anything from her and I told her I will not be able to always talk to you when you need it I I think that you might want to look for either like a, a therapist or a counselor to be able to speak to or another friend if I'm not around because I physically cannot be and to take on everything that I'm taking on plus what she was dealing with it was getting to be it was getting to be a lot and uh, it became difficult to manage and I told her that and she had said in response that she had respected that and understood and uh, you know we we parted ways for the time being like I told her I'm like you can still talk to me it just you know don't be surprised if I don't always pick up because I can't always um, it's not that I'm trying to ignore you it's that I'm likely just trying to deal with things here and make sure everything is some semblance of stable um and you know it got to the point where she would start calling me 20 times a day again and um there was a point where she ended up leaving me a voicemail calling me a selfish bitch and uh saying that she was done with me and stuff like that and i said uh you know what i'm sick of this shit so i didn't bother calling her back and every so often, I would receive voicemails from her, one of them going, I forgive you, I hope you can forgive me. And I'm like, you forgive me for telling you that I was trying to take care of my family? I'm sorry, I'm not putting myself in that position again, where I'm just going to be berated for doing the right thing. And I'm sorry it didn't end up in an ideal situation. Either way, I was in kind of up shit creek, so to speak, you know? Like, I, um... It was not... <laughs> It was not a pleasant parting, to be honest, and, you know, I do wish that we had been able to settle things in a better way, but ultimately, if she's gonna give me shit for trying to take care of my family when nobody else really would, then, I mean, what am I gonna do, you know? I, it, it, it sucks, but... Unfortunately, she's not the only person I've had to cut ties with, unfortunately. I had another friend um, who I'd gotten back in touch with when I went to college. Um, we met at a summer camp and uh, we met we met at a blind camp actually, like it was like a summer camp for the blind kind of thing. And it was super fun. We didn't actually meet there. I should say we, we re-met there. I used to know her when I was a kid and then she left my old school. And then that's when we met again, like 13, no, probably about 12, 13 years later, I want to say. Um, actually, no, less than that. But it, it was a long time, either way. And um, for the first several years, things were pretty awesome, actually. Things were great. We, we talked a lot. We played a lot of Pokemon together. Um, we did a whole bunch of stuff, like not just her, with friends. I saw her through um, a relationship that did not end particularly well on, on, on her end and, you know, I did my best to be a supportive friend to her and stuff like that. When I moved back in with my mom, uh, again after the uh, poor ending of my previous relationship, I don't want to dive into the details on that one to be honest, but um, she was able to visit. so. You know, she came over a lot. I went over to her place a lot, and things were great for the longest time. Somewhere along the time, along the line, relatively recently, I guess it was almost a year ago now. Um, she kind of got really moody and, quite frankly, super rude. And to be honest, I'm not sure what caused it. Um. I, you know, I did my best to, to help her out and be a friend despite all that, but 
There came a point where when she was here, she was insulting our food. She was wasting our food, wasting our money, wasting everything. Um, just treating Candido like a butler and just generally being not pleasant to be around, if I'm honest. And um, I know I'm making it sound kind of trivial. I'm not diving into the very deep specifics. But, I mean, this went on for quite a while, and it got to the point where I had to kick her out of this apartment, and I said to her, like, you're kind of being horrible, and I don't appreciate you treating people I love the way you're treating them. Um, so, I ended up sending her home, and her parents, this made me really sad, her parents came to pick her up, and they were, you know, happy to see me, they're like, you know, thanks for... Thanks for entertaining her. Thanks for, you know, taking care of our daughter and stuff like that. We'll see you again. And, you know, I felt really bad. But at the same time, like, I I didn't feel it was right to keep her here if she was just generally going to be disrespectful and just generally terrible to someone I really care about. And I, and I said, I'm like, you can treat me like crap all you like, but as soon as you touch someone I really love and care about, like, you are, you are gone. That's not happening. Um, so I explained to her while waiting for her parents, like, why I was upset. Even when I told her she had to leave, I explained it to her and stuff like that. Throughout the entirety of it, never got even remotely an apology just yeah I know I get it and that was it um so at one point because I knew her boyfriend was upset because when I kicked her out uh she was in a call with him over Skype so I knew he was upset as well so I sent um basically a group message to them explaining why I was upset and apologizing to her boyfriend for for everything and, and, and all that. And her boyfriend said he understood and, and stuff like that. To this day, I have not heard from her at all. I have not heard a single attempt um, to reconcile anything. You know, I, I tried at one point and I haven't messaged her in a long time. And as much as I would like to, if that's the way things are going to be, I don't know that it's a good idea to. And, uh, I don't know, I realized I rambled about this for so long, and, I don't know, maybe, maybe some of you hearing this might think it's a bit trivial. Why did my keyboard come up? Okay, sorry about that. I realize some of the stuff I'm talking about might seem a little bit trivial, but, um, I don't want to spend, like, an hour talking about every little tiny detail, because there was a lot more to both those situations, and... Ultimately, as unfortunate as those situations were, and as bad as I feel about both of them, I am ultimately glad that I ended up cutting out people from my life that were, you know, hurting me or my loved ones. And um, sometimes, as hard as that can be, and as long-lasting as some of those feelings can be, sometimes it's better to just, you know, if somebody's hurting you, and they're not willing to either respect you or listen to reason or something, sometimes it's better to just cut out toxic people as hard as that can be to do because like ultimately you're saving yourself at the end of the day. And it's like, if they're going to be selfish, then why can't you for the sake of yourself and the people you care about? Is that really selfish if you're getting somebody toxic out the way, you know? Um, and it's like, you're not going out of your way to hurt them or anything. You're just saying, nope, I'm done. And you're carrying on your way and doing your own thing. And, you know, um, now we're in a situation where we've gotten in touch with other friends who have been really awesome. And, you know, ultimately, as unfortunate as, you know, your old cir circle breaking up can be, um... You know, there's other people around, and eventually you can find another good friend. And it's not that you're replacing that friend, like, no one will replace the friends that I had. But I still have friends, and they're great ones, you know? Um, <laughs> I don't know if any of this is making any kind of sense to you guys, but I just felt like rambling about this for a little while, and this is going a little bit long, y'all, so, um... 
I'm going to go ahead and ask you for your thoughts on this matter. How do you feel about um, I guess anything I talked about, like whether or not, um, you feel I did the right thing, whether or not, um, you feel that, uh, cutting people out is the wrong move. This is definitely a last resort thing, by the way. This is not, like, what I talked about happened over the course of probably about a decade kind of thing. Like, this was not, like, an instantaneous, I'm cutting you out kind of thing. I, I tried looking for other solutions first, but... Either way, um, have you had your own situations where you've had to do this? I'd really love to hear from you guys um, and get your thoughts on the matter. Because, I mean, perspective is a really nice thing to have. And I feel like the mini cast can be a really good place to, to share that perspective and, uh, you know, see what other people have to say. So feel free to share your thoughts, you guys. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and quit rambling for today. So I'm going to go ahead and say thank you guys so much for watching. I hope, you, I hope you enjoyed it. I cannot talk for the life of me. Please feel free to check out any other series I have on this channel, as well as joining the Mancino clan on Discord if you haven't done that already. Links to that will be in the description down below. And until next time, you guys, Mini out.